Hey, what's up guys, Dan here, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to absolutely crush it on Amazon FBA in 2019. Now, this is gonna be probably my best video, my greatest video that I've ever created on this channel now, and you guys will see why, because I will literally show you the best strategy that I personally know that 99% of other people have no idea that like these strategies are what is working right now in 2019, and what is separating people, what is separating the successful sellers, the million dollar sellers, the six figure and seven figure sellers from everybody else who's just competing amongst the beginners right so if you've never sold on Amazon FBA before if you are just getting started with online business and you want to quit your nine-to-five job and you want more out of life you want to create a passive income business well then this video is for you now I've been selling on Amazon uh, since about early 2017 and I'm gonna explain exactly how everything happened for me and also how things have changed on Amazon because things have really, really changed. Now, if you're just getting started with Amazon and you still haven't found a product right now, you're trying to find a product, you absolutely need to watch this entire video, this whole video, because if you don't, you're gonna have um, missing pieces of the strategy and you're not gonna completely understand. I want you to completely like be dialed in to what, like, what it takes to win right now in 2019. So this will be the year when only those who adapt and focus on creating the absolute best product will win and I'll explain how how to create the best product how to adapt what exactly I mean by that now those who fail to adapt and keep selling you know typical Aliexpress Alibaba type products will lose and I know that's a bold statement but you'll completely understand exactly what I mean by Aliexpress and Alibaba type products if we just keep watching here now a little bit about my story I went from broke to living my dream life to having complete abundance in my life in less than a year with pursuing online business and specifically Amazon FBA and previous to that I was broken unhappy I had massive of ambition but I had no real way to actually start making money and I had no idea which business was working which business was the best I was reading books nonstop and I had this th these big dreams in my life just like you have right now but I didn't have an actual tangible way I didn't have a, like what I call a wealth vehicle I didn't have an actual business that I can apply myself to in order to uh, achieve success in order to actually start making five thousand a month ten thousand a month or more which is you know it takes money to be able to do things to be able to travel to be able to pay your bills to be able to you know buy things right it takes financial abundance and so that's where I was in my life and so I had literally a dollar sixty six in my bank account I'm not even kidding uh, and I had over forty thousand dollars in college debt and I know that if maybe you're not in college right now you're not college age maybe you are older and you're looking for a way to really improve your situation in life you're looking for a way to improve your family's financial situation and you know you're looking just for a way out of this rat race and I completely understand and and when I was just starting out you might have this too I had these limiting beliefs and fears that prevented me from getting on the road to freedom and they were so massive in fact because I was so conditioned by society and by my family and by my friends and by my surroundings that I was, you know, who, who am I to think that I can go and start a successful online business? Who am I to think that, you know, I'm arrogant enough to rise above everybody else, follow my dreams and kind of go at it with tunnel vision without even, you know, thinking of anybody's opinion about me, without even thinking of the fact that I had absolutely zero experience with online business and zero knowledge of selling anything online. And so I was in this constant search for the perfect business and I was constantly trying to find this you know, like a way to make money, a way to make money fast, a way to make money quick, but obviously it didn't exist. And so as I kept looking online, I tried social media marketing, things like that. I realized, uh, I found out about Amazon FBA and I realized that I could go from zero to 30K a month on Amazon with no clients, with no actual products and less work than my nine to five job. And so what I did was as I was watching more and more videos, this was at the time in March 2017 when I found out about Amazon FBA. So it's been a crazy journey since then. Honestly, it's been absolutely crazy. And if you guys have watched my channel, you guys have seen it, um, but or you guys will be able to watch the videos later. But I found out about Amazon FBA in 2017 of March. I set myself a goal of $10,000 a month by July of 2017. And what happened since then was I faced failure, failure, and then massive success. And I failed with my first two products, but then I hit it big with my third product, which I am still selling on Amazon today. And so that is my journey. That is who I am. That is where I come from. And obviously, when, when I hit that 30K a month milestone back in 2017, um, it completely rewired my brain. It completely just blew me away. And it, it gave me that sign that this is the right path for me. 
And so I'm telling you right now that if this sounds like you, yeah, or if, if, if you are maybe, maybe you're like 40 years old or 30 years old or 25, or your college age, just like I was when I was starting out, um, you know, it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter if you have zero experience with online business. You can become successful with Amazon FBA because clearly Amazon FBA is the titan in our generation. E-commerce is the big thing in, in our generation. Like if we talk about, you know, the, the automobile, the gas car in the early 1900s, what is it in the early 2000s or in the 2000s, right? In this millennium, clearly it's e-commerce, right? Accessibility, the, the fact that I can just order something right now from my phone and I can go and get it within literally tomorrow, literally tomorrow if I'm in the U United States right here. And that's how it's gonna be in the rest of the world very, very soon. So obviously that's where you have to go. That's where the opportunities are. You have to ride the wave and you have to rise up with the tide. So since then, since achieving that freedom, what I've been able to do, I've been able to travel the world in complete abundance. I've been able to live my dream life and I've been able to move into my dream apartment in Vancouver, Canada. And it was literally a penthouse. I never would have thought that I would have been able to do that. And so that was just one of the many things, you know, in life and what I've always said was experiences are worth more than things. And so, you know, I've been able to ski, which is something that I love. I've been able to buy my dream car and all, all these things, all these things would have not been possible if I didn't get on the, on this journey, if I didn't start Amazon FBA and if I didn't just right here, I went, you know, one of my favorite things in the world is the outdoors and being able to go hiking, being able to have the freedom to do that whenever I want uh, without having a boss to tell me that, hey, you know, this is, you can't do that today because you have to go to work. So, you know, that's just a little bit about me. So those are just some of the things that I've been able to do. And, you know, ever since I started selling on Amazon FBA, ever since I committed to online business, I, I've been able to live my dream life and also help you know, all these people, hundreds of thousands of people through my YouTube channel, through my content here, uh, also to build their, build out their dream lives. So that's why I'm not telling you guys this to show off. I'm just, I'm just telling you guys this to let you know the possibilities out there. They're massive. I'm not special. So now let's get to the actual meat of the content here. The old way of selling on Amazon is dead. And what was working two years ago will not work this year. So the main, the main problem with Amazon this year is there's going to be a massive shift. And it's the shift from selling commodity type products to brand building. And it's the shift from the commodity, right? So selling to commodity type products. And I'll explain what a commodity type product is. It's the shift from doing that and selling the same thing as everybody else to actually doing real entrepreneurship, which is actually improving the product. And I'm going to talk about the 20% rule and all these things that will help you ensure that your product, your first product will be successful and will ensure that you get to six and seven figures fast on Amazon FBA, because it should not take you a long time if you're following everything I say in this video. And if you don't miss a single thing, so selling commodity products is the number one cause of failure on Amazon. And that is 100% guaranteed selling commodity type products is the number one cause. And, you know, I've experienced this in my, in, in my own Amazon journey. I've mentored thousands of students through Ecom Freedom, through the Ecom Freedom course. And I can tell you that the number one cause of failure is this. And so brand building and adding value will be the number one cause of your success on Amazon 2019. And it's just not, it's not just building a brand. There's a lot of things that go into that as well. Now, I want to start off with a quote. It is not the strongest of the species that survives, nor the most intelligent that survives. It is the one that is the most adaptable to change. And that's the famous quote by Charles Darwin. So the motto is adapt or fail. And you will win by charging the highest price in your niche. Okay, the highest price. I'm going to show you how, to, how, you, how you win by charging the highest price while also adding the most value to your product than anybody else. So this year, there's going to be a shift to make sure that you're massively focusing on the product itself. So I want to show you guys an example. All right, so we're going to go ahead and type in French press right here. And I'm going to show you exactly what I mean by commodity versus building a brand and focusing, having a massive obsession with your own product. All right. So if we just search up French press, this is probably one of my favorite things in the world. I literally pack a French press in my suitcase right now. You know, I've been traveling for the past four months. And so, you know, coffee is a huge thing for me. And that's why I can tell you that when I searched up French press uh, on Amazon, because I had, you know, I have a Prime membership, so I can just order it whenever I want. I searched up French press and I ordered one from Amazon. And I was looking right away on Amazon. I was looking, I was looking, and all of these seemed the exact same to me. All right. And so I ended up ordering this one. And the reason why I ordered this one, large, large French press coffee maker, vacuum insulated stainless steel by Coffee Gator, this one clearly stands out. And there's a lot of reasons for this, all right? You guys can see, this is a commodity product. This is what I'm talking about. This is how your product needs to be this year in 2019. If I were to ask you, scrolling through this list, which product stands out? It's obviously this one. And I mean, this one, I guess, because they put like this, uh, rainbow thing going on. I'm not sure if that's uh, that's just to sell more, but 
Anyway, this one clearly stands out. And the reason for that is because Coffee Gator has an absolute product and brand focus. They are obsessed with their brand, they're obsessed with their product, as opposed to all the other products on there that literally look exactly the same. Now, let's talk about something called the 20% rule. This will absolutely rev revolutionize your Amazon business this year. Your product must be at least 20% better than every single other product in your niche through added value slash perceived value. So uh, there is you know, real value and then there's perceived value. We can talk about that right now. The added value, the difference between added value and perceived value, all right? When you're looking at, when we're looking at Coffee Gator on Amazon, we're looking at that French press there, right? Right away, we see, we see that, that okay, there's like a box, right? It's, it's a different color. It looks really high quality. So we're perceiving it to be of a much higher value than everything else in our minds, right? So perceived value plays a massive role in the consumer purchasing behavior. So it, it plays such a huge role in the person who's scrolling through on, on Amazon. You must understand that when somebody searches for your product on Amazon, you literally have like a couple seconds to capture, to get that person's attention and to have the person click on it. Literally you have a split second, like less than one or two seconds to go and capture the person's attention and click on the product, all right? Now, not only perceived value is important, but also added value is important. And we do that through differentiation. That's specifically no-brainer differentiation. So to achieve the 20% rule, you must add value through differentiation, but it's, it must be something that is a no-brainer in the niche. So for a French press, we're not just gonna change the color and call that a no-brainer differentiation. That's not a no-brainer differentiation, right? If we're gonna make the, the French press purple, well, okay, we might think that we're adding value, but in reality, it's just an excuse to add value. So we're not adding real value. In fact, we're actually just kind of making up an excuse to differentiate, and it's not anything, any real improvement. Um, your improvement uh, must be a good differentiation. It must be good added value. So what I just talked about, making the French press purple, that's bad differentiation. That would fall in that category because we're just changing the color just for the sake of changing the color. Now, what good differentiation is, is something that is a, like clearly an improvement. So improving the product material and quality, listening to negative product reviews, that's a gold mine to find uh, amazing you know, reasons to improve your product or amazing ways to improve your product. Superior first customer impressions and having a mind blowing listing. Now, a superior first customer impression is huge. That's something that hasn't been talked about ever on Amazon. People forget that, like I said, as I was saying, you only have a split second to capture the, the, the customers or the potential customer's attention so they can click on your product. And then once you have their attention, you need to keep them on the listing. You need to get them to convert, which means you need to get them to buy the product. To get them to buy the product, they need to, be, they need to see that there is more perceived value in their head than the price that they're paying using their credit card on Amazon. You understand? So the product in their head through the listing, and that's how they see it, through the listing, through having amazing pictures, through having an amazing product that follows the 20% rule, through having an amazing product description, amazing product photos, right? Everything's optimized. And so that will determine whether your customer will click on the buy button or not. So in this case, for the French press, an example of a bad differentiation, let's say if you were uh, thinking of selling French presses, it's not a good product, by the way, on Amazon USA. It is incredibly competitive, so don't sell it. But an excuse for a differentiation, a bad differentiation would be just to change the color of the steel right here or change the color of the um, French press. Like it could sell, but you're not really adding any kind of value, right? And these guys, they're actually adding value because when they saw that all the French presses looked exactly the same, they actually not only changed the color, but they also improved the material. They made, a, uh, they made it a vacuum insulated stainless steel. And they also most importantly included a box in their, uh, with their product, which I've actually ordered this. Too bad I can't show you guys this, but it is, it, it, I was mind blown when I opened the product. I was like, wow, this is exactly how you should be selling French presses, how you should be selling any product on Amazon. So let's talk about superiority in your niche. Now you must be the best product in your niche through what I talked about, perceived value and actual value. Perceived value, like I said, is listing quality, pictures, box design, product inserts, great packaging. Th those don't actually improve your product. It just increases the perception of your product in your customer's eyes, which makes them more likely to buy, much more likely to buy. Now, actual value is adding a no-brainer improvement or differentiation to your product, improving product design, product quality, functionality, etc. And so also, you must leave an unforgettable customer first impression. You must wow the customer from the time they view your listing to the time they receive your product, open your box and use it continuously. And you have a very limited time to do so. You actually only have you know, uh, a couple seconds to get the product, to get the customer on your listing, a couple seconds to get the customer to decide whether they're gonna buy your product or if it's trash, they're not gonna buy your product or in their head, you know, they're like, it's not worth it. It's not, uh, the, the, the money cost of the product does not exceed the perceived value that I see for this product in my head. So let's say if I'm the customer, and I'm trying to buy the French press or I want to buy the French press and the French press is $49.99. But in my head, it's like, nah, this thing doesn't cost more than 
So I'm not going to buy it. But if it's mind blowing, if everything's mind blowing and through perceived value and actual value, and in my head, I think that, you know, I would pay $100 for the French press. It costs $50. It's a no brainer, right? Obviously more value to me. It's more value for me than me keeping my money. So that's why I'm going to buy it. That's how consumer purchasing behavior works. Something that's incredibly important to study if you are selling on through e-commerce or anywhere else. So as I talked about, commodity versus brand, a commodity type product is the one on the left. It's incredibly boring and there is no you know, box packaging, even though it's funny, the one on the left is a huge, huge brand, a worldwide recognized brand. And so you know, the thing with that one is that it's incredibly easy also to find uh, that exact one on Alibaba already pre being pre-made. That's a sign that it's a commodity brand. So you know, the way that we actually um, have our product so massively improved like the one on the right here the coffee gator one that I ordered and that I've used this morning to make coffee um, We actually go we, we we look into the perceived value the actual value How do we improve it? And then we talk to our suppliers on Alibaba and we talk to them and we tell them kind of hey This is exactly what we want and that's what we want And so you can work with them and they'll be able to improve the product for you now product research remains the most important factor in reaching six figures a year on Amazon fast it remains you know, by far the most important factor uh, on Amazon FBA in deciding whether you're going to be successful or not. And so there's also a new important factor that has come in this year, 2019, and that is the potential. When you're researching your product, when you're doing product research in the back of your mind, you have to have this, the potential for massive or 20% rule improvement with your product. And as you follow the 20% rule and you increase the value of your product, you will be able to easily rank and launch even in a, in a competitive niche, sometimes without a launch service. And so that's because we're following the 20% rule and that's because when people are seeing our product, even though we have way less reviews, even though we have, you know, we're, we're just brand new on Amazon and we just started selling, um, we're not, you know, the customer doesn't care about launches, giveaways, anything like that. They're going to go, they're going to see it. This is way better. I'm buying this. And so the less you improve your product, the more you actually have to rely on exceptional product research and finding something with no competition. And so obviously product research isn't simple. It's not, you know, super easy. It's pretty straightforward and it just takes time. But, you know, you're going to have to rely on, on finding a much less competitive product than you can get away with if you were following the 20% rule, if you're following this new important factor, which is the potential for massive improvement with your product. So I hope you can see that, you know, competition isn't as uh, important anymore. And, you know, being exceptionally good at product research isn't as important anymore if you are actually improving your product by 20% over everybody else. Now let's talk about something that in 2019 should not be happening. You should not be doing this. You should not even experience this if you're following this entire video, this entire strategy, the price war. And this is something that all OG Amazon sellers have experienced. This is actually something that all entrepreneurs have probably experienced. Uh, and that, it, that happens when you're selling the same exact product as everybody else. So if I go on Amazon and I do product research and then I find a product and there's no difference. I, I go and source the product on Alibaba, which is basically, th this worked in 2017, 2016. This worked, this was working. And so if I did that, um, and I was selling the same product as everybody else, what happens is, let's say the competition is at $50, and then I come in at $45, and then you know the competition will drop it to 43, and then I drop it down to 41, and suddenly it's a race to the bottom, and we're selling at like $9, which cuts out all of our profit. So we do not wanna engage in any price wars. If we have superiority in our niche, Right? If you have superiority in your niche with your product, which means you have a more valuable product with a higher perceived and actual value that allows you to charge the highest price, having less reviews in turn, making the most money because you're having the highest profit margin. So the golden rule is never rely on price alone to sell your product. Never rely on price alone to sell your product. That's incredibly important. All right. You do not want to be finding any price wars. The, the, the beautiful part about this entire strategy is that we're avoiding price wars. We're charging the highest price and we don't have to rely on being super good at product research because our product is inherently better than everybody else by 20%, a minimum of 20%, which makes people buy. So in turn, the success formula in 2019 on Amazon becomes product research with a focus on finding low to medium competition products with a high potential, where you'll also apply the 20% rule, improving actual and perceived value by not only differentiating, but actually improving the product with a no brainer improvement, mind blowing customer first impression from when they view your listing to when they open your package, you must wow the customer. And then, which I haven't talked about yet, this is even more important than everything else, rapid success solidification. And you are ensuring that you're building a moat around your business, just like a castle has a moat around its, around its, uh, you know, around its uh, fort. Trademark plus patent plus brand and lineup of products. So let's talk about that right now. Now, the things that matter less in 2019 that matter more previously because people weren't really focused on improving their products. People were more focused on just throwing something up on Amazon and hoping it sells. Um, you know, the, having the best launch strategies, the best algorithm manipulation strategies, keywords, giveaways, and coupons price, all this stuff matters less now because if your product is inherently better, well then 
you know, you win. You don't have to rely on having the best, you know, the best tax to launch your product, the best algorithm manipulation strategies, you know, which means, by the way, you know, how to get the fastest amount of views, how to, how to launch your product fast, how to, you know, do the most amount of giveaways or the least amount of units to give away so that you can actually rank better, things like that, or how to have, you know, the best possible, most optimal price. These things don't matter as much because when you are better than your competition, nothing else matters. People will buy. So if we talk about solidifying your success, let's say you're successful, great, you're making 10 to 30K a month with your product. Now it's time to build a moat around your business. And a strong fortress has a moat around it. If your grandmother can copy your business overnight, that's a problem. It's what I've always been saying. If your grandmother can copy your business overnight, well, obviously anybody else can copy your business overnight. And so what we need to do is we need to rush to brand registry. And what brand registry is on Amazon, it's, um, it allows us to go and lock our listing from any hijackers. It allows us to lock our listing from anybody else from selling on our listing. So it builds a, a moat around our business and that way it becomes very difficult for somebody to just go and hijack us. And also, even if we don't have brand registry, then it's difficult for somebody to go and mimic our product if we've done enough improvement because they won't be able to even find our product on Alibaba unless you know we're already making $100,000 a month with that one product well then obviously you know chinese uh chinese manufacturers they'll catch on they'll start selling your improved product so how we rush to brand registry is you need a trademark and we apply for a trademark with uh, the u.s patent trademark office and this allows you to get brand registry and you need to make sure that it's a trademark in the united states and it has to be a granted trademark and then once you have brand registry expansion becomes simple and easy because adding additional products will not trigger any hijackers Right? So we're not worried if we have a product making 100,000 a month or 50,000 a month, 30,000 a month, if we go and add a second or third or fourth product, which you are if you're building the brand, right? So if we're selling our French press, well now we're gonna sell our um, coffee grinder, we're gonna sell our coffee holder thing, you know, travel holder. Um, you know, it becomes super simple, it becomes easy. We're, we're not worried about any potential hijackers, anybody messing up, up our business pretty much. So getting to seven figures becomes unstoppable. So this is what brand registry looks like right here. And right here you go, get started, and then you're gonna need a trademark. And right here you go on USPTO, right? US Patent and Trademark Office, you can do it through here. And so there are many lawyers that will do this for you. You go to trademarks, that's what you need. You need a trademark to be able to access uh, brand registry. And then here you can search for trademarks to see whether your business name has already been taken or not. Now, a service that I recommend is trademarkia.com. And that's a service that allows you to apply for a trademark and they'll be able to do it for you, just like any other lawyer will do as well. And now let's talk about the state of selling on Amazon USA. And I wanna talk about this because it's very, very important actually. So. You know, we have many markets to sell on, Amazon USA, Amazon Canada, Amazon Europe. Uh, but specifically, if we talk about Amazon USA, is it still worth it to get on Amazon USA and start selling on there? Uh, and I wanna say that Amazon USA continues to be the market with the greatest amount of potential products to sell. And that's just a fact because it's got the biggest market, it's got the most amount of people, right? The population in the United States is nearly 400 million. And um, the thing is, is that most, most sellers on Amazon USA are amateurs. So there's an insane amount of incompetent and clueless competition that you'll, that you'll see, which they have no idea about how to properly sell on Amazon. They don't know anything about you know, perceived value, actual value. They're just counting on finding a product in Jungle Scout, finding a product in their product research software, and just throwing it up on Amazon and then hoping that it will just start selling. Well, that worked in 2017, it's not working anymore. All right. So, if we talk about the growth of e-commerce, Amazon USA is still growing at a, an incredibly high rate and it's not stopping anytime soon. So there's lots of room to grow. There's nothing to worry about that. And so applying the strategies mentioned in this video and focusing on product plus customer experience will allow you to keep winning and dominate on Amazon USA. So if you look at this graph here, uh, this graph shows us the growth in Amazon Prime memberships in US households uh, since 2016. So as you can see, uh, percent of US households compared to households in millions, you know, in 2016, we had 36%, 35.6% of households um, that were on Amazon Prime. And then in 2018, 47%, and then this year it's gonna be 51, and then in 2020, it's gonna be 54.8. Uh, so obviously it's still growing. More customers on Amazon, uh, more sellers need to come on there and more competent, more sellers that are watching this video, hopefully, which will actually, you know, who will actually listen and who will actually improve the product, who will actually do everything that I'm saying here. And this is another graph of how fast e-commerce is growing here in US dollars in the United States. So this is in millions of dollars. As you can see, it's an upward trend and it's not stopping anytime soon. Now let's talk about the rise of Amazon Europe. I don't think this has ever been talked about before. 
Amazon Europe, products that are incredibly competitive on Amazon USA are now just popping up on Amazon Europe. And the best markets, the best markets 2019, uh, next to Amazon USA are Amazon UK and Amazon Germany because they offer the greatest opportunities in 2019 for anybody who wants to sell. If you're from the US, you can sell on Amazon UK and vice versa. If you're from Germany, you can sell on Amazon USA. As long as you are an Amazon seller, you can actually go send your product from China where you're ordering to any fulfillment center anywhere in the world and you can sell. The only thing obviously becomes, well, if you're selling on Amazon Germany, you're gonna to have to translate the listing. Now, Amazon will do some of it for you, but what I recommend is either having a German friend review your listing or just hiring someone on Upwork.com or Fiverr.com. They're outsourcing websites, super cheap. You can go and hire a translator. You know, this is the world of the internet right now. It's incredibly easy to just outsource something that you don't know on a website like Upwork.com. But if we look at the combined population of Amazon UK and Amazon Germany, it's 140 million, all right? So the US population is almost 400 million. And the combined population of Amazon UK and Amazon Germany is 140 million. So that's still a lot of people. And I would say they're about two to three years behind in adopting e-commerce. But if you're one of the first to get on there, and if you're one of the first to, you know, apply a strategy for Amazon Europe specifically, which we we'll talk about in the next slide here, uh, then you'll be able to cash in massively on, you know, this, this population It's 140 million people. It's a lot. And so the other great thing about Amazon Europe is that you can easily sell on Amazon France, Amazon Spain, Amazon Poland, right? All of these markets that are popping up right now by just sending products to one fulfillment warehouse in Germany, because what they have is multi-channel fulfillment. And so in Germany, uh, if you have product there, then also if someone orders from France, they'll just send it, you know, from Germany, from, uh, they'll send it from Germany. And if someone orders from Spain, they'll send it to Spain. Obviously your listing has to be in Spanish, but you can just, use the translator service that I talked about on Upwork.com. So let's take a look at the screenshot here where one of my students in the Econ Freedom course who became very successful on Amazon Europe, uh, he sent me this. His name is Lucas. I actually interviewed him on my channel and that video is up, but you can actually watch that video after this video because there's still a lot of things to go through. A lot of incredibly important things for you to be profitable on Amazon. Um, but as you can see, these are his numbers. So on the UK, uh, th this is all in uh, British pounds. So 5.7 and then you got 1.966. Uh, and this is thousands, right? So that he's making about 16,793 um, British pounds in revenue every single month. And so that's at a 50% profit margin. So that's, you know, over six figures a year uh, in passive income without having to work more than an hour a day. So this is, as you can see, Germany, France, Spain, Italy. And all he did was he followed my advice on translating the listing on upwork.com. And that's exactly what you do. And so these are just some of his screenshots here on all the different marketplaces because Amazon doesn't show you um, in the app. It doesn't show you all your revenue in all the marketplaces here. So this is in the UK. And then these are all in the different marketplaces. So if we talk about the best strategies for six figures on Amazon EU fast, and this is you know applicable to anybody out there who's just getting started, I would highly recommend looking into Amazon Europe, uh, even if you're from the USA, as an awesome uh, avenue to start selling in. So the first is the first mover strategy. It's what I call the first mover strategy. And what you do is you do product research in Amazon USA, you find a product that is selling incredibly well and it's very competitive in Amazon USA, and then you're the first to list it on Amazon Europe. And how we find products is obviously using Jungle Scout. The link for that is down below, which is the best Amazon software for product research. You will not be able to find any products without it. I don't know how, like, it was even possible before it came out. And then we've got the second mover strategy, which is doing product research in Amazon Europe. Jungle Scout allows you to do that in the UK, Germany, et cetera. You find a product there with one to three listings that are selling well, um, but they have over 20 plus listings selling well on Amazon USA. So you cross check it. And then what you do is you find the product, you use the 20% rule to improve the product and add value. You bring it to Amazon Europe, and then you're, you, you translate all the listings, you sell them on all the marketplaces in Europe, and you absolutely crush it. You should hit 10K, 20K a month in revenue. And then what you do, is, uh, like I said, easily sell Amazon France, Spain, Amazon Poland. You just send the products to the fulfillment warehouse in Germany and then it's all done for you. So now I'm gonna show you guys an example of what I just talked about, an awesome strategy to actually go and find a product that is already selling incredibly well on Amazon USA and that has a lot of competition, right? And they're making a lot of money. But using the strategy, you can go and, you know, find the product on amazon.co.uk or on Amazon Germany or on any of the other Amazon Europe listings and you can go and list the product. So right here, I've got these uh, blue light uh, glasses. They, they block light, so they're pretty cool actually. So if we pull up Jungle Scout and we take a look here on amazon.co.uk, we'll be able to see that um, they're not making, obviously they're not making anywhere close to the money being made in the US, but this one right here, and this is just a Chinese listing. You can tell that this is just a, a Chinese manufacturer or just some seller in China trying to sell this. And so clearly this is a Chinese listing. It's probably a seller in China who's just, you know, they threw up a listing, like what kind of brand name is Sixus? 
So, you know, for a blue light computer glasses, that, has, that makes no sense. But they're making 13480 and this is in British pounds. So remember, this is like $18,000 a month. And so there's not many reviews, although in this case, it would be using the second mover strategy, which I talked about, because there's a lot of these that already are uh, on here, right? So as you can see, there's like these yellow ones, and then there's the, the clear ones. So there you go. And if we go on Amazon uh, USA, right here, they have thousands, thousands of reviews, 3,900. And if we pull up the Jungle Scout here, you can see like 363,000 a month, 125,000 a month. And so there you go. That's an awesome way to go and do product research either in USA, you start with USA, and then you look at the product, okay, it's too competitive. Uh, right away, go look on amazon.co.uk. And then also the other Amazons are Amazon Germany, so it's .de. Uh, and then also there is uh, Poland, Amazon Spain, Amazon France, you know, amazon.fr, if we go there. So these are awesome uh, marketplaces to sell. Obviously you would have to translate it, so it would be, um, right, that would be that. I speak French, so I understand this. So there you go, right? And if we pull up Jungle Scout on Amazon France, uh, we can see that, you know, there is money being made. It's 5,000 uh, euros a month, 10,000 euros a month on Amazon France. So clearly like there is money to be made. And if you are thinking that, oh, it's only 5,000 euros or 10,000 euros a month from just computer blue light glasses, right? Even from the, if you're from the US, even if you're from any marketplace in the world, this is a lot of money. This is more money than most people make from their jobs. And you don't have to even work, you know, more than like an hour a day after you've got your listing up. And uh, yeah, so obviously it's an amazing opportunity. So as you guys can tell, there is an abundance of opportunity in 2019. Amazon and e-commerce are the titans of this generation and you have to follow the, wa the wave and rise with the tide or fail to adapt and get left behind as I talked about before, uh, which was Charles Darwin's uh, quote. And there will always be an abundance of opportunity for the one who commits to a goal, takes relentless action and is determined to win. All right. And, you know, for all those other people out there, the small thinkers, the people that are just, you know, tire kickers and they're just kind of thinking like, ah, oh, no, it's too competitive, this and that. Guys, when I was just starting on Amazon, I was also, you know, there were also all these videos out there. Oh, Amazon's too competitive, this and that. Right. Literally, probably as soon as Amazon started, as soon as Amazon selling even became a thing, uh, people were still thinking, oh, it's too competitive. It's already too late to get in. So don't listen to that. Don't listen to any of that. Follow what I say here and you will succeed. You will hit six and seven figures a year. So there will be people watching this video who will go out there and achieve massive success with Amazon and will be living their dream life. So I want you to be one of those people. There's no reason that you shouldn't be that person. And now an incredibly important part is overcoming yourself, right? Like the biggest journey, the biggest part of entrepreneurship is like overcoming your own thoughts, overcoming yourself. It could be, you know, your own fears or your own arrogance. If you're trying to do this alone, the chances of you succeeding are slim to none. And that's just a fact. I can tell you this from years of experience of selling on Amazon and in e-commerce in online business now, you will make mistakes spending thousands on restricted products, on patented products and on banned products. Like you're gonna invest into inventory, there's nothing worse than investing into inventory, the inventory comes in and then you get a letter from Amazon, you get an email saying, hey, your product restricted, goodbye, and then you lose all that money. And so obviously, that delays, you will purposely delay your own success and your own dream life due to your refusal to make an investment in a course and seek mentorship. So the information is out there, the winning formula is there, you just have to take action, be relentless. So that's why I created the Ecom Freedom course where, as I've showed you, that screenshot of Lucas who is killing on Amazon Europe, and I also just, you know, I've, I've always interviewed uh, my successful students on Amazon USA and in every single other marketplace in the world, those are found on my YouTube channel. So I took all those mistakes that I've made so you don't have to make them to fast forward your, your success from zero to six and seven figures a year on Amazon FBA. So, you know, that way you're not spending thousands on all these restricted products, patented products, banned products, and also you have my mentorships so you're able to actually go and message me on my private Facebook, like to my own profile, and you're able to get me to check your products one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll be able to tell you if it's good or not. So the last thing that's left is go out there and take action. That's the most important part. As I've said, there will be people out there who will go invest in themselves, who will go and actually start and commit to a goal and take a relentless action and win. So now you know the strategy, but the, the most important part is to actually do something. So if you go, you stop watching this video, and you know, you're out of here, well, you know, what was even the point of spending all this time watching this video? You could have just, you know, gone and played video games. You could have gone and watched football or something, right? So nothing against football, by the way. But uh, just go out there, take action. And also, uh, if you guys, like I said, are interested, Econ Freedom X course, the link is down below. There's gonna be a link to message me in there as well. So I hope that you are one of my next success stories and that you're out there and uh, living on your way to your dream life. And so guys, if you wanna learn the absolute best product research strategies to find awesome products where I show you, I go directly into Jungle Scout and one-on-one -on -one I'll show you in the video, how I do product research, then go ahead and click on the link above. There's going to be a card right there with the video. You guys can go check it out. So subscribe to the channel if you guys enjoyed this, leave the video a like, and I'll see you guys soon.